Hey, what's going on, Guardians? My name is The Black Link, and today, December 4th, 2019, we had the official Bungie Helmed reveal stream for the incoming Season of Dawn. Community manager Deej sat down with several developers, and they got to talk about some of the new things we'll be getting into when that season of content comes out on December 10th. Now, overall, it wasn't a bad stream. It was very modest, I think is the word that I would use there. For the most part, the only really new stuff shown off was the new six-man activity, the Sundial. Although we did get an awesome look at the new free and seasonal track armor that players will be able to earn in Season of Dawn, we got to see the way the new artifact, the Lantern of Osiris, is going to work as well as some of the new mods that you'll be able to earn as a part of it. And we even got a brand new Season 9 content release calendar that we'll be going over in this video. If you didn't get a chance to catch Bungie's live stream, I'll have a link to the archive of it down in the description box below. So if you want to go get caught up on that before you watch this, you'll have an opportunity to do so. Now, first things first, a lot of people were hoping for some sort of reference to Trials. That didn't happen, and to be perfectly honest, I always thought that was a bit of a long shot. I said in my video yesterday that while I think now would be the perfect time for any sort of revamp Trials to come out, I, I, I highly doubt that that's something that they're actually working on. That would be a long shot to say the least. And while, of course, I am a bit disappointed that we didn't hear anything about Trials, there was still a lot of really cool stuff to learn about. First things first, let's take a look at that brand new Season 9 calendar that gives us a great look at what we can expect from the Season of Dawn. First things first, it is launching next week, December 10th, 2019. Here's what you can get as a holder of the Season Dawn Pass. You'll get access to a new seasonal PvE mode, the Sundial which we got to see a lot of over the course of this live stream. Additionally, you're going to get access to the Sundial, Nerul, the Hollow Voice. Apparently, according to the way they talked about it on the stream, there's going to be a normal version of the Sundial and a hard version that will unlock later on, so it's going to be very much like the Menagerie. But moving on from there, what's coming free to all Destiny 2 players on the 10th? A new seasonal artifact, the Lantern of Osiris, as well as the Solar Subclass update. We're also getting the release of the Elimination PvP mode, as well as the reprised PvP map, Rusted Lands, fan favorite from Destiny 1. Additionally, we've got Tangled Shore and Mars Obelisks open. This is going to be for everybody to head to those different world spaces, activate Obelisks. It's like a little bit of a story thing for Osiris. We'll be getting access to that on the 10th. Then, coming on December 17th, Nessus and the EDZ Obelisks are going to go live. And the Sundial's final boss will be changing as well. Additionally, the mission, Save a Legend, which deals with Saint-14, is going to be going live. Additionally, starting on December 17th and going until January 14th, we've got the Return of the Dawning, the premier winter event for Destiny 2. Starting on December 24th, we've got the Return of Iron Banner, as well as the next boss for the Sundial, Tazarok. Then, on January 7th, we've got the legendary version of the Sundial going live. This is going to be the hard mode for that activity. Just like in the Menagerie, the normal version of the Sundial is going to have matchmaking. The legend version, you're going to have to have your own curated fire team to complete it. Exciting stuff. Additionally, on January 7th, the exotic quest for the Devil's Ruin sidearm is going live. After that, on January 28th, we've got the exotic quest for the new fusion rifle, Bastion. And then, following that up, on February 4th, the Imprian Foundation is going live. No idea what that is. Hopefully it's going to be some kind of new activity. That was something they didn't discuss at all over the course of the live stream. So it might be a new story mission, or it might be an activity similar to the obelisks and the story things going on with Osiris. Additionally, on February 4th, we also have the final boss for the Sundial going in, Inatam which is the last of the Scions they have listed here as bosses for the Sundial. Then, finally, from February 11th to the 18th, we've got the return of the Crimson Days event. So I hope you get your Valentine Days partners ready for the PvP mode in that. But alright, there we go, that's it for the Season 9 calendar that we got over the course of this reveal stream. The rest of the live stream was pretty focused on the Sundial, but we did get some interesting looks at the way the new artifact, the Lantern of Osiris, is going to work. First things first, they've made a couple of changes to the way mods are going to work on there. Of course, a lot of these mods are going to seem a bit familiar, there are some minor changes between what we have in the Gate Lord's Eye artifact right now for the Season of the Undying, they changed a few things like the elemental affinities, since this is going to be a solar-focused uh, season in the Season of Dawn. 
The primary elements we're going to be working with are solar and then void as the secondary element. They also change the way some of these mods work. It's less hand cannon, more precision weapons like scout rifles, linear fusion rifles, and sniper rifles this time around. But one of the biggest changes they made here was with the location of the anti-champion mods. In the artifact we have right now, those were currently tier two mods. But when Season of Dawn comes out next week, those are moving to the Tier 1 block. This is a fantastic change. It means the anti-champion mods, that's anti-barrier, unstoppable, overload rounds, that kind of stuff is not only seeing a change with the weapons that you can attach it to. You're going to be putting it on, again, precision weapons this time around, like scout rifles and sniper rifles and linear fusion rifles. But you're going to be earning those things first things first when you level up your artifact. Great change. It was a little weird that basically we started off earning enhanced glimmer mods for no reason on the artifact, and we couldn't get into the in champion stuff until we got to the second tier glad they're moving that forward but we've also got some brand new mods in the artifact as well for instance we got a new mod guardian angel this requires 10 artifact mods to be unlocked and four energy cost this grants a chance to generate healing orbs for you on scout rifle sniper rifle bow and linear fusion rifle precision final blows Again, this artifact seems to be very heavily focused towards precision weapons. So you get those precision kills, and enemies will drop healing orbs for you to heal yourself with. Moving on, we've also got some brand new Season of Dawn exclusive mods. Any bit of armor that you get during the Season of Dawn is going to have a new fourth mod slot. And over the course of the season, by playing in various activities, you're going to be able to earn brand new mods that come with a brand new mechanic, Charged with Light. Now they spent just a little bit of time talking about this, but basically with each of these mods, you're going to be able to perform a specific series of actions that will give you the buff charged with light. And once you've got that, you can use that buff to execute other actions that are tied to other mods. So basically certain mods will allow you to become charged with light and then other mods will allow you to use that charge with light buff to execute certain things. For example, here are a few of the mods we got to see. First up, precisely charged. This is one energy cost. Become charged with light by getting multiple rapid precision final blows with linear fusion rifles or scout rifles. After that, we've got empowered finished. Become charged with light by finishing a combatant, consuming one tenth of your super energy. Then we've got shield break charge. Become charged with light by breaking an enemy shield with the matching energy type. And again, having these mods equipped and then completing the challenges that they present before you will grant you the Charge with Light buff, which you can then utilize to activate these other mods, like High Energy Fire, which costs 4 energy. While Charged with Light, gain a bonus to weapon damage. Each defeated enemy consumes one stack of Charge with Light. So almost like an extra version of like Rampage that you can stack with this Charge with Light buff. And then next up, we've got Protective Light for 2 energy cost. While charged with light, you gain significant damage resistance against combatants when your shields are destroyed. This effect consumes all stacks of charge with light. The more stacks consumed, the longer the damage resistance lasts. Which, honestly, both of these sound like pretty powerful abilities, and they went on to note that rather than being like things are with the fourth tier of mods in the Season of Undying, where they're only really active when you're running, you know, an enhanced relay in the raid, or when you're killing nightmare enemies, these mods are going to be active all across the game, giving them much more versatility than the previous mods we had in the fourth slot. So I'm really excited about what that could mean. Although it may sound a little bit spooky for PvP. Guess we'll just have to see next week. After that, we pretty much got to see some of the brand new finishers, but ultimately, it became all about the Sundial six-man activity. And to be perfectly honest, it looks pretty modest. This basically is going to be like what I thought it would be, basically just another Vex offensive styled activity, but with a couple of interesting changes. It's actually more like the Menagerie than it is like Vex offensive. This will be a six-man activity that loads you into Mercury, where you'll be fighting through different waves of enemies and completing different objectives. As you complete an objective, you'll be able to move on to the next round until ultimately you make it to the boss. So in that regard, it's very much like the Menagerie. And thankfully, that boss is going to be changing every so often. So, you know, more than once a season with just, you know, a Gate Lord and then the Undying Mine. Happy to see that. We got to see plenty of gameplay from this in the live stream itself, and it looks like they incorporated some interesting mechanics, similar to some of the stuff that we did in Spire of Stars. 
During the one encounter that we got to see, the Guardians were warped to a version of the future where the Cabal won the Red War and were able to take the light. There is some shielded Cabal that you have to take down. In order to do that, you have to kill these lesser Cabal who will drop an orb, you pick that orb up, you throw it into the shielded Cabal, and it calls in like an airstrike from the Cabal ships above. So they drop that ordinance, it breaks the Cabal shield, and then you're able to take them out. It's an interesting mechanic, pretty simple, and nothing we really haven't seen before. What was interesting was that we did get to see some of the weapons that we may be earning from the Sundial activity. Throughout the stream, they were using some of the old prophecy weapons from back in Curse of Osiris, leading me to believe that those may be some of the rewards that you'll be earning throughout the Sundial itself. Hopefully they're going to incorporate, since this is basically going to be like a mixture of Vex Offensive and the Menagerie anyway, hopefully they're going to incorporate a reward system similar to what the Menagerie has. You guys know me, I have argued that the Menagerie has the best overall reward system in all of Destiny 2. I love being able to pick the weapons and armor that I want to grind for. And hopefully we're going to have something similar here with the Sundial on Mercury. I mean, shoot, we already have that forge in the Mercury Lighthouse right now as it is. Let's put that bad boy to use and get some specialized, randomized rolls of the perfect paradox in the west of Sunfall. If that's the direction they're going with this, I cannot wait. Overall, the sundial itself looks like it's going to be a pretty interesting and fun activity. I can't wait to see what the other mechanics and what the boss fight is going to be like when we get to jump into that next week. But alright, there we go. That was pretty much it for the reveal stream that Bungie put out for the incoming Season of Dawn. Hopefully that covered everything revealed in the stream, but if there's anything we missed, be sure to leave it down in the comment section below, as well as your thoughts on what we got to see today. I know a lot of you guys were probably disappointed that there was no mention of uh, Trials or really PvP outside of, you know, just mentioning that Rusted Lands is coming back and Elimination will be a thing as well. But whatever your thoughts, be sure to let me know. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to drop a like, make sure you subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay up to date with all the latest stuff we're putting out. That's it for this one. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, I am the Black Link. You guardians, stay frosty.